Hi friends, Miss Megan and Blue here. Today we're going to be talking about a magical creature of the ocean, the seahorse. Seahorses have that horse-like head, but then they have a funny monkey tail, which they use to grab onto seagrass when they're floating at the bottom of the ocean. These guys are super weird. They have no teeth, so when they eat their food, they slurp it up. No chewing involved, and there's no stomach inside of a seahorse either. Makes for pretty quick digestion, if you know what I mean. Another thing I find really interesting about seahorses is that their eyes move like a chameleon. They move independently from each other, which is kind of funny, like googly-eyed seahorse. One other fun thing that I like about seahorses is that they are Mr. Moms. When mom is ready to have babies, all she has to do is give dad a little present from her ovipositor, a little egg deposit, and it goes into the brood pouch of the male. Brood pouches are located near the base of the tail, and the male will hold the babies from about 10 days to six weeks, depending on the species of seahorse. During that time, he will actually make the body chemistry go from his own to reflect the outside ocean. So when the babies are born, they're not gonna be shocked into the world. And if, talking about when they're born, it's kind of explosive. Check it out. Whoa, isn't that weird? Welcome to the world! And you have a couple hundred brothers and sisters, right? And I also love seahorses because they're so cool and so unique. Some predators of seahorses include fish and crabs. Speaking of fish, do you guys like sushi? Because I love sushi. Did you guys hear about the oil tanker that crashed into a Chinese grain ship back on the 6th? Yeah, it was a really big tanker. About 136,000 tons of condensate oil was on that ship. There's a difference between condensate and crude oil, but hang on, 136,000 tons? That's a lot. That's like 22,666 elephants, or 3,400 semi-trucks if you lined them up from San Diego to Tijuana and back, and then some. That's how much oil was on this ship. So it crashed and it burned and it sunk. There's still oil on that sinking ship and it's getting out into the environment. The weird thing about condensate oil spills is that we don't know much about them. Seriously, they're not like crude oil spills. They are highly flammable spills. We cannot use skimmers because boom, might explode. And condensate acts differently. It has diff different chemical properties than crude oil does. So experts say our best case scenario is to wait for it to rise up from the bottom of the ocean floor from the sunken ship, the remainder of the oil, will rise up to the surface of the ocean because it is less dense than water and then we're hoping it just evaporates into the air. That's our best case scenario. Worst case scenario, something catches on fire, a lot of animals die, and speaking of sushi, it could be releasing really harmful carcinogens into the ocean because that ship is still leaking today. Where do the fish live? Right where that thing sank. So be careful of what sushi you guys eat. Just be mindful of where it's sourced from or just hold off on sushi for a bit. I don't know, it's not really possible for some of us. Ways that you can help seahorses and the environment because everything's connected. If you guys can reduce your use of single use items like disposable straws and the sporks and the paper plates. Go ahead and get a sustainable stainless steel straw that you can reuse all the time. Bring a spork with you to wherever you eat or grab some stainless steel or bamboo chopsticks that you can reuse whenever you go out to have some nice Chinese or Asian cuisine. Thank you guys for tuning in. Ooh, and lastly, don't forget to follow us and subscribe on YouTube because we love to hear what you guys think and we want to give you the latest and greatest. Bye, you guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah. See you later.